Pali language can be useful in a number of ways, but two I'm going to concentrate on in this short module. Being able to read other people's body language in business when you're selling, negotiating or interviewing is useful, but having a better understanding of your own body language will lead to helpful changes that will be extremely useful throughout your business life. We'll look at what individual body language signals are in a moment, but before we do that, let's talk about what body language actually is. It's the visual display of what someone thinks and feels. What someone is actually thinking at that moment in time is what I refer to as short-term signals. How someone is feeling or the mood they're in takes a lot longer. Like confidence, enthusiasm, boredom or disappointment, these are all longer-term signals. Short-term or instant signals can sometimes be so subtle or small they can be difficult to see. However, if the conversation is going slowly wrong, there'll be a number of these small subtle signals that add up to a mood change. And this is longer term body language. If you spot subtle or small signals and respond quick enough by changing tack and asking different questions, you can recover the situation. However, if you miss a number of signals over a long period of time, it can cause problems and result in lost rapport and possibly lost business. Another point worth mentioning, and helps explain it a little bit more as well, is the fact that we talk at about 100 words a minute, yet we think at 800 words a minute, nearly 50,000 words an hour. Those words that we're thinking come out through the subconscious mind, through the body, and with a little bit of practice, you can read them. Body language can vary from one individual to another. However, there are some elements that are common to all of us. So let's start by looking at the initial greeting, such as how far away we stand from someone, how we shake hands, and of course, eye contact. How far away we stand from someone can be split into zones. There are three basic zones to consider. Zone one, the polite or we've just met zone, which makes people feel comfortable and less threatened. Zone two is everything is okay and trust has been established. And finally, zone three is reserved for good friends or someone in business you have known and trusted for some time. If you stand too close too early to someone, it can cause them to feel uncomfortable. The strength of a correct handshake is difficult to describe accurately, but it is important to get it right. Too soft and clammy and it will give a bad impression and a sign of weakness. Too hard and strong and it will give the impression of arrogance and overconfidence. So try to offer your hand slightly open as this will show friendliness and trust. When shaking hands with someone who is dominant with a strong handshake, try taking that extra step forward and walking almost into them, straightening their hand at the same time. This will neutralize the situation as it makes them feel uncomfortable because you've invaded their space. The eyes. Where do you stare? Well, most of us are told to look someone in the eye to convey or transmit trust. It comes from when we were young and we were challenged by an elder to look me in the eye and tell me you're telling the truth. The problem with staring someone directly in the eyes is that it's at best uncomfortable, at worst it's intimidating and causes people to feel uncomfortable, wary and even suspicious. Reading other people's eyes can be rewarding because the eyes dilate or constrict depending on enthusiasm or concealment. When someone is interested, excited, enthusiastic, their eyes will dilate. Likewise, when someone is concealing something, or even lying, their eyes will constrict, often described as beady eyes. This is very useful in the sales process and when negotiating or even interviewing because eyes are easy to read with a little bit of practice. After you've been talking to someone for a few minutes, you'll have a good feel for how often they're looking at you and where they look. 
if they start to look up after you're asking questions, they're probably trying to recall what happened or how they feel about the questions that you're asking. However, if they start to look down and away, they may be trying to conceal their real feelings about something or maybe trying to avoid giving you an honest answer. As a general rule, it's better to look someone in the face rather than directly into the eye. The cheekbones is fine as well because this is regarded as the social zone and makes people feel far more comfortable. Just as a tip, if you're with someone who's trying to intimidate you, keep on talking to them but stare at their forehead and keep it up. It's amazing how it makes them feel awkward after a few minutes and they start to back down because they can't quite figure out what's going on and it makes them feel uncomfortable. As a child, when I was embarrassed by something, I usually went bright red. As a teenager, it didn't happen so often and as I grew up, it happened very, very rarely. When you're in a business meeting with someone and they are thinking one thing and saying another, it is likely to come out in small blushes. You would not see the redness of the skin, but the fact that somebody is perhaps touching their nose or above their eye or down the side of their nose or earlobes suggests that there, there is heat there and there is also blood that's come to the surface of the skin. That tells you really that whilst they're saying one thing, they are in fact thinking another. What also happens when someone is a little concerned or has decided to keep something back is that they tend to breathe that little bit more quickly. The more worried they are, the quicker they breathe. And this, of course, flattens the voice, loses some of its tone, and people tend to talk a lot more quickly because of it. How do you make good use of reading body language signals and yet keep mistakes to a minimum? Well, the general rule is to rely on signals that happen immediately after something has just been said, whether by you or them. You'd normally see something after a bold direct question or a bold answer. Another helpful hint is to look for a number of signals that happen in a short space of time. This is called a cluster and proves to be very reliable when reading body language. One of the most frequently asked questions I get with regards to body language is, can my own body language be improved? And the simple answer is yes. The best way of going about it is to talk to a colleague or a friend, somebody in the family, somebody that you trust, and ask them, is your handshake good? Is it nice and upright? Are you standing too close to people or too far away? Is your eye contact just about right? Your good friends will know and they'll be able to put you right and prevent you from making mistakes that might be harmful in business and even in your social life. One of the things I suggest to people is to find ordinary things to talk about at the beginning of a meeting. Things about their company, about your company, harmless things really, but it allows you to get used to the way their body works, how their voice sounds. And then when the meeting progresses into the more awkward areas, where perhaps you're trying to close them or negotiate with them, you'll be able to see those changes in their body language and react accordingly. I hope you've enjoyed this short introduction to body language. In the world of business, it's very useful. In sales, in negotiation, in interviewing, it's amazing what you can read and how you can alter your own body language and your own strategy and tactics to suit. It's a very useful tool. If you've got any questions at any time, just drop me an email or perhaps even give me a call if you've got the time.